you want to learn how to make a cot fitted sheet just like this one, then just keep watching. Ah, I dropped it. Have I told you before how much I hate ironing? Uh oh. No, no, no. I made the cotted, cotted fit sheet. No, gosh, I keep messing up. The ovaries. All right, I can do this. The crazy behind the scenes. <laughs> people today I'm sharing with you the tutorial of how I made this cot fitted sheet a cot fitted sheet is a great thing to gift to an expecting mum or if you are an expecting mum yourself they're a great thing to make because they really do change the vibe in a room it's such a big piece of furniture a cot so having a sheet that matches the decor really does help in making your nursery look nice if this is your first time on my channel, then welcome. My name's Marie, and this channel is all about motivating mums to make and mend. I'm a mum to four little kids myself. This here is Reuben. He's the youngest of my four kids. But the fitted sheet that I made today isn't actually for him. It's a gift. This tutorial today is suitable for beginner sewers, so if you consider yourself a beginner, then this will be a perfect project for you. But with all of that being said, let's get making. My mum makes, makes a cot sheet. sheet. I'm making this cot fitted sheet for my sister who is 34 weeks pregnant with a little girl and she's picked out this lovely fabric here which is this dusty pink with um, vintage florals on it. It's a quilter's cotton so that means that this fabric did wrinkle a bit when I put it through the wash to pre-wash it so I did have to iron my fabric first. Ironing meters and meters of fabric is up there with the unpicking as the worst part sewing. And now that my fabric is nice and crisp, I'm ready to cut out my pattern piece in order to make this fitted sheet. Before I put Reuben down for a sleep, I went and measured his mattress so that I was able to have those measurements to use for this fitted sheet today. It's just a standard size cot mattress, so if you as well are making this for just a standard size cot mattress, the measurements that I'm providing today will work perfectly fine. Reuben's mattress is 132 centimeters long, by 72 centimeters wide and 13 centimeters high. And I want to make sure that the mattress protector is going underneath the mattress as well so that it can hold it tightly with the elastic underneath the mattress. So to work out how big I wanted my fitted sheet to be, I took the measurement for the top rectangle section of the mattress and I've added 20 centimeters on each of the sides to make it long enough to go down the edges, down the height of the mattress and also tuck underneath. So with the measurements that I took of Reuben's cot, we're going to be cutting a large rectangle on our fabric and it's going to be 172 centimeters by 112 centimeters or in inches that is 67 and a half inches by 44 inches. And my fabric here that I have is 112 centimeters wide, including the selvage. So I'm going to have to use the selvage as part of the width of the fabric. It won't matter too much because when I fold this over to make the casing for the elastic, you won't be able to see it. It'll just uh, add to the uh, internal part of the casing. So you won't notice it, but I will use that as part of the width of my fabric. So I'm going to use the full width of my fabric and then cut the length to be 172 centimeters long. To make it a bit easier to cut the length of my fabric, I folded the fabric in half and then cut half the length that I mentioned before. So I measured 86 centimeters from the fold line and I put some markings there and then I joined those marks together to create a straight line before cutting it out. Once unfolded, it is 172 centimeters long and it was just easier to cut it this way on my small table. I have my big piece of fabric folded in quarters and I have all four of the corners meeting up at this point here and I'm going to cut a 20 by 20 centimeter rectangle out of it, out of all four of those corners. I used a fabric marker to mark 20 centimeters up from the bottom of my fabric and 20 centimeters from the selvage, join those dots together to create that square and then I cut it out of all four of the layers at the same time. So now we can unfold our big piece of fabric now that we've cut out those four squares and we're ready to actually start sewing. This corner here that we have cut out on each of the corners is going to be the part that goes down the height of the mattress and then also underneath. So we're going to make that corner by matching the two sides of our square to each other like this. And we're going to be pinning and sewing down this edge here on all four of those corners. I'm going to sew my edges here using a French seam because that will enclose this raw edge and make it look a bit nicer. So to do that, I am matching the wrong sides together first 
uh, and I'm going to sew a little seam on it that way and then I'm going to flip it out and sew them right sides together which will encase this raw edge. So I'm going to start by first pinning together all of these corners with the wrong sides together and then I'm going to sew it with a straight stitch on my sewing machine. If you don't want to use French seams, there are other ways that you can finish off the seams of this fitted sheet instead. You could sew them right sides together and then with the edges of your fabric, you could either overlock them or serge them or with your sewing machine, just go over them with a zigzag stitch to stop them from fraying. But if you are going to do French seams like I'm doing, I'm first sewing the fabric wrong sides together and I'm using a half centimetre or quarter inch seam allowance here. And then I'm going to flip my corners out the other way so that I can iron my seam so that it is facing the inside. Once I've ironed this wrong side of all of my corners, I'm going to take it back to my sewing machine. And this time I'm going to be sewing it with the right sides together. I'm sewing using a one centimeter seam allowance this time, which is about a half inch seam allowance. And that will encase the first seam that we did inside this corner. Here's my nice pretty corner there and on the inside it looks nice and neat except for this thread that I need to cut but here is the seam nicely encased. One of my edges of selvage was really quite wide so I've just trimmed it down to about half the size and then blended it into this other section I had to curve it a little bit but it won't matter because once the elastic is in it it's going to all draw tightly so you won't notice it there's one side that's a centimeter shorter uh, but now the next step we're going to do is we're going to hem the entire edge around our fitted sheet and this is going to be the hem that also is the casing for the elastic that's going to draw the fitted sheet in underneath the mattress. So I'm going to be turning our edge of our fabric under twice, so once here and then once again to enclose that raw edge inside so it looks nice and neat. And in order to hold that flat, I'm going to iron it. So I'm going to go back to my iron again, um, folding this under. I'm going to use the edge of my selvage or where the picture starts uh, to help me get a straight line there and then folding it under again, making sure that you're leaving enough space to thread your elastic through. So measure the width of your elastic and then um, make your casing about that wide. So I think it's about a centimeter and a half you want to make your casing in order to fit your elastic through. So back to the iron. I'm folding the edge of my fabric over about one centimeter, ironing it down and then folding it up the second time and measuring 1.5 centimeters before ironing it down the second time. Then I'm putting a few pins in place just to keep the folds there before I sew it on my sewing machine. You could definitely just eyeball this. You don't need to measure it if you don't want to because it doesn't really matter if it's a straight line. Once the elastic's in there, you won't be able to tell anyway. So I've now ironed and pinned the entire way around our fitted sheet. And now I'm going to sew this down using a straight stitch on my sewing machine, sewing the entire way around, but also leaving a little bit of a gap so that I can thread the elastic through at the end. I'm going to change the thread on my machine so that it matches more closely to this color, especially on the bobbin, before I start sewing that straight stitch. Here's how our fitted sheet is looking now that we have hemmed this casing. And the next step is for us to thread our elastic through that casing. And the elastic I have here is a quarter inch elastic, which is 0.6 centimeter elastic. And we're going to need a long piece of it, 2.3 meters or 90 inches. So I'm going to cut the elastic at that length and then I'm going to feed it through my casing. So here's my long piece of elastic that I've cut and I need to find the hole that I left in my casing. Here it is. And I've got two safety pins to do this. The first safety pin, I'm going to attach one end of my elastic to the uh, hole here so that I don't lose it with it going inside. And then on the other side of the elastic, where did my other pin go? Okay, need another one. And then the other side of my elastic, I'm putting a, another safety pin on. And this is the one I'm going to thread through my casing. So I'm just going to take some time here to push the safety pin through the casing. So I'm scrunching up the casing onto the safety pin. And then as I pull it through, it feeds the elastic into the casing. This step is certainly not as tedious as the ironing, but it's still one of those long kind of boring parts. 
give you a different angle of the exact same thing while I take forever to do this step. I finished threading the elastic through the casing and this is what it's looking like so far. And the next step is going to be to finish off this elastic. So we're going to overlap the two ends of our elastic here and then do a zigzag stitch to hold the ends together. And then we're going to switch back to a straight stitch so that we can close over the hole that we used to put the elastic in our casing. With the casing all sewed up, our fitted sheet is now complete. So let's have a look at what it looks like on our cot. There you have it. This is how the fitted cot sheet looks when it's on the bed. I think it looks really good and I hope that Teresa likes it too. If you've enjoyed this video as you're watching it, don't forget to press the like button and click subscribe to come back to see some of my future content. You might also like to watch the video that I made, the uh, changing pad cover, which is just here. So if you would like to watch that video next, it'll be linked in the description box and in the cards at the end of this video. If you'd like to see what I'm up to during the week, you can follow me on Instagram at mymummakes.marie or you can follow me on Facebook as well. So thanks again for watching and until next time, go get creative and we'll see you later.